Okay, here we are with example 7-1, um, our first F0 exercise to see how this all comes together. Okay. Uh, so we're asked to write a function called Chevy 6 that evaluates the sixth Chebyshev polynomial. It should take an input of x uh, and return the result of this expression. Okay. Use fplot to display the graph of this function in the interval from 0 to 1. Estimate the location of any zeros in this range. And then use F0 to find as many different roots as you can. Does F0 always find the root that is closest to the initial guess? Okay. And so basically we want to find the roots of uh, this expression. So let's pop over to MATLAB and let's do it. Okay, so here we are now back in MATLAB. And I've tried to set it up so in the bottom of my screen I can still see the equation from the problem statement. Because uh, there's no way that I would remember that. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is uh, we want to set up an error function. Okay, So we're ultimately going to want to solve the roots of this equation. Uh, and so we're going to want to set up an error function so that if I pass to it a variable x, uh, the error function returns the value of this expression. So I'm going to create my function. Uh, as always, a new script button in the Home tab. Okay, uh, And so if I start with the function signature, so res is equal to we are told to call this Chevy 6, and it's going to have a single input variable of x. Okay, So lowercase or uppercase, uh, it's up to you. Um, I'll make it an uppercase here because I'll try and vectorize my function. Uh, but if it's not vectorized, um, and, or if it's vectorized and you use a lowercase x, uh, it's, it's just the same. Okay. So I'm going to get my documentation prepared, copy my signature, and then note that this is a function to compute the value of the sixth. And uh, part of my spelling, Chevy Chev polynomial. Okay. Uh, close enough for now. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. And so then um, all we need to do. Um, is for a given value of x, we want to evaluate this expression. Okay. So I'll have res is equal to 32 times um, x to the 6. Um, so I'm using capital X. So first I'll write it out, then I'll vectorize it. Minus 48 times x to the 4 plus 18 x squared minus 1. Okay, and so if I vectorize it, um, okay, I need to make sure I'm using capital X's here, since that's what I'm taking as my input. And by vectorize, I'm just going to take my multiplication and exponentiation and add that period in front of it. That way, if X is a scalar or X is a vector, uh, it's going to work all the same. Okay, and so let me save that. You know, by default, it'll save as Chevy 6. And just to make sure uh, it, it's working properly, so if I do Chevy 6 and I pass it a value of, say, 4, okay, I get an answer. If I try Chevy 6 and I pass to it some random vector, okay, I get a, a vector result. All right? So it seems to be vectorized. Things seem to be working correctly. Okay, so ultimately, we want to find the roots. Uh, so the first step that's suggested is use fplot to visually get an idea of where those roots might be. Okay, uh, and so what I'm going to do is let me try and uh, shrink my screen down here uh, so that I'll be able to put my plot window on the side and, and keep it open as, as I work through this. Okay. okay, so the command will take the basic form of fplot. Okay, then I'm going to give it a function handle. Uh, of my air function. So at Chevy 6, okay, the range I want to search over. Uh, so in the problem statement, we're told to search over the range uh, 0 to 1. Um, and then if you wanted to, if I wanted to say, hey, plot it as a black line, I could use all those commands that we learned with the plot command. Uh, they're all applicable here. Okay. Um, so actually, um, yeah, let's just plot that. And it talked about how we could um, draw on our reference line of uh, y equals 0. The other way to do it is just with 
a grid on, we can draw on some grid points. Okay, cool. So it looks like over this range, I have one, uh, two, uh, three roots. Okay, excellent. So uh, now we're gonna use F0 to solve for the locations of those roots. Okay, so remember I said when we use F0, F0 is a bracketing technique. So the preferred method to solve is to solve by giving F0 brackets. Okay, so the basic called F0 is I'm going to give it a function handle. I'm going to tell it what function I want to find the zeros of. Then I either need to give an initial guess of a root location or brackets. Okay, if you can provide brackets, give brackets, uh, and we can play around with why that's a little preferred um, after we after we get it done. Okay, so if I want to find all the roots over this range, so going from left to right, look at my you know first root here, and if I'm looking on the grid, I see that between 0.2 and 0.4, it crosses my zero just one. Okay, so that is a perfect uh, search range. Okay, so let's call this maybe R1, root one, will be the result of F0. Give it function handle, so I need to tell it uh, what my error function is, and let's give it our search range. Okay, let's search from 0 0.2 to 0 0.4. Okay, bam. So I get a Solution of, or I find that I have a root at 0.2588. Hey, that looks pretty good. Okay, if I keep searching from left to right, looks like I cross again here, and I see that I cross just once between 0.6 and 0.8. So let's look, store the result of to R2, uh, the result of F0 searching over the range 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. 0.7071, great. And then my third root I find over here, and it looks like I crossed just once between 0.8 and 1. Okay, so let's solve for our third root by searching between 0.8 and 1. Okay, excellent. Okay, that's great. I found all of my roots. Okay, cool. Um, so you could turn me off now. Uh, but uh, let's play around just a little bit more to, to have fun. So if I look at Chevy 6, uh, what would happen if I tried to give F0 a search range of 0 to 1? Okay, so the first thing is uh, it'll actually work. And why it'll work is what F0 will first do is it'll evaluate my function at those two bracket endpoints. So to evaluate my function at 0 and 1, okay, over here, my function is negative. Over here, it's positive. So it uh, conforms to the requirement that my function has to change signs over the interval. Uh, and so MATLAB will assume my function is continuous. So F0 will go ahead and will solve this problem. Okay, the issue is, is that intermediate, intermediate value theorem tells us if my function changes sign over an interval and it's continuous, then it'll have at least one zero, right? At least. This is the case where we just saw we have three zeros. So if I give it this range, F0 will run. What's unclear, though, is what zero it'll actually find, right? It depends on how that search algorithm set up of how it starts to shrink that bracket in terms of what it actually converges on. And so if we run it, we see it actually gives uh, the first root 0.2588, okay? Um, so brackets are nice because if I can visually see my function, um, I can identify ranges over which I have, say, a single zero, and then when I set up that bracket, I know I'm going to find that one uh, desired zero. The other um, point the problem statement was getting at is when you use initial guesses. So remember, if I specify an initial uh, guess, then MATLAB is first going to try and find a bracket. Okay, and I'm not exactly sure how that bracket is found. Okay, so if I look, uh, our third root was 0 0.96, uh, second is uh, 0 0.7. Okay. Um, so what would happen if I gave an uh, initial guess of 0.8, right, right in between those two roots? You know, question is, what root am I going to find, right? Uh, so it turns out I get 0.7071. If my initial guess was, say, 0.81, I'm still stuck there, 0.85, right? Now it jumps over to the other root, okay? And, you know, all it's trying to get at in the problem statement is um, initial guesses are often very convenient, okay? Okay. Um, Oftentimes, maybe I have a physical problem and I have an idea about where the answer should be, 
Uh, and so I can quickly come up with an initial guess of what that answer might be, right? Or maybe I base it off of a similar problem. But if you can specify brackets, uh, brackets are preferred because, you know, if I set up brackets, I know I'm going to get the root in between that brackets. Uh, and a lot of physical problems we'll look at only have one solution, uh, and, and so it will work uh, just fine, right? So uh, it's just a matter of with initial guesses, um, you, know, you need to be careful because if you have multiple roots, it's not clear ahead of time uh, which root you'll actually get. Okay.